to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. The Fantasy Footballers back with you Tuesday, August 15th. Jason Moore, Mike, the Fantasy Hitman Ride. I'm Andy Holloway. Excited to be with you. Great episode prepared for you today. The NFL season is uh, just right around the corner. Soon. Very soon. I think a lot of people are looking forward to this episode because there'll be some reactions to big news yesterday. Uh, what? Did something happen? Uh, nothing I heard about. Yeah, I, I didn't <laughs> oh, see. I'm going to have to break some news to both of you today. <laughs> oh, okay. I mean, I was on Twitter all day. I didn't, Prob- I didn't probably see Probably good news. Yeah. Yeah. But I'm going to share some good news with each of you. Oh, oh thank goodness. All right. Uh, here at the top of the show, I want to let people know a couple things. First of all, thank you for supporting this podcast. Like, if you, if you enjoy the content that we're putting out, and and you want a simple way to say thank you for that content, uh, you can go and leave us a review on Apple Podcasts. You can rate the show wherever you're listening. Um, you know, it helps us out in the algorithms when you when you do that, when you follow or subscribe on whatever platform you choose. So maybe that's YouTube, because you can watch the show over there, youtube.com slash the fantasy footballers. <laughs> that's the YouTube greeting, yes. Mike. <laughs> So you can click the bell over there, subscribe. We've got a live stream coming up I'm going to tell you about in a minute. But whether that's Apple Podcasts, Spotify, it really does help the show. So we we just uh, appreciate everybody that has done that. It seems like people are doing that a lot because last I checked, fantasy football and this podcast mm-hmm. was the number one. Oh, the number one sport. We're number one. Sports show on, we're number one. on Spotify. And Apple. And, and Mike... Mike went on a local uh, Los Angeles uh, I did. Uh, news media program, mm-hmm. and the first question he received <laughs> was, are you surprised that your show is the number one sports show? Uh, and a, I, I don't a, know. It's a tough question to, to answer when you're not surprised <laughs> yeah. in the slightest. Of course be- not. Because the Foot Clan is incredibly mighty. I... Um, I had a birthday party this I have to tell you this because it's the first time I've ever heard it, um, which means I need to pay more attention to my family. But birthday party for my kids. Uh, they have birthdays 10 days apart. We do them together to spare everybody two parties. Good and, man. Yeah, I know. I, I'm looking out. So we have this birthday party, tons of people at the house, and uh, we're in the middle of moving, and my, my uncle's sitting there, and uh, he's been a big supporter of me throughout my life and the show. And he was actually the person that introduced me to fantasy football like 20 years ago when you did it in newspapers and stuff. And he was just congratulating us on the success of the show and and going into a new year and just being very nice. And then he 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 goes, when you started this thing, he goes, there were a lot of eye rolls. (laughs) He said there were a lot of eye rolls in the family. And I go, what? These people, they all seem like they were. They were on board with this plan to make a podcast about fantasy football. I'm going to need a list. So apparently, uh, not a lot of confidence out there, just like the gentleman you were interviewed by, kind of shocked that fantasy football is that powerful. Yeah, that, that is fair. When you're, when you're not as uh, insane as we are and, and most listeners of this show, you don't, you don't realize there's millions of us. I mean, it didn't, it didn't seem that insane at the time, but I guess it was. Yeah, it, it, it's, it's crazy. But, uh, you know, at this point, we're just used to it you know <laughs> it's just like oh number one again Thank all you. right here we go jason always can be counted on um doo-doo. i too am extremely humble <laughs> <laughs> all right we got cool stuff going on right now so first thank you for supporting the podcast this time of year it's really important and we appreciate it um especially everybody over at join all of our patreon supporters uh love you guys thank you so much we are giving away an ultimate draft kit for life. The UDK, it's our uh, our pride and joy. We've poured so much effort and time into this thing year over year, improving it, building it out, helps you win your league. We're giving away an ultimate draft kit for life along with a signed Derrick Henry jersey and a signed T. Higgins mini helmet, three separate winners, 
All you have to do to enter the contest is uh, head over to ultimatedraftkit.com and pick up the UDK or the UDK Plus before our live stream on Friday, which will be at 6.30 p.m. Eastern time. Actually, the live stream is at 6 Eastern. The giveaway will be towards the end of that live stream at 6.30, and we will announce the winners on the live stream. So anybody that has purchased it up to this point and anybody that gets it this week before Friday. Jason has purchased a giant golden tumbler. Mm-hmm. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. It takes uh, it takes 10 men to operate. <laughs> okay. <laughs> as long as he purchased it and it wasn't on the company card. I purchased yeah. it yeah. with the company card. Dang it. <laughs> Dang it. Um, so that's huge. UltimateDraftKit.com. Pick that up. That UDK for Life giveaway. Uh, we've done this for a few years now. We got the list of people. And they just they just uh, send Papa Josh a note and say, "Hey, it's me. Dave. It's me. I've got the I've got the UDK. Give it to me." And then yeah. he's uh, legally obligated to hand deliver it to your house. Yeah, yeah. That's he's, the, he's flying all over the country. Yeah, we send him send him all over the place. But uh, so that's going on. And then we are we have a live show at the end of August. Uh, you can learn about attending that. It's in Los Angeles. BallersLive.com, presented by Underdog Fantasy. We'll be live with. Uh, very special episode, a live Q and A, and um, that's next Saturday. Wow, you got to be kidding me! No, I'm not. I'm looking at the calendar right now, and if my calculations are correct, that's next Saturday. I'm ready for that, Mike. Next Saturday, it's a lot of work we got to do, but uh, it's going to be quite the show. Wow, BallersLive.com. All right, and uh, Deucers, I guess you guys can help out with the live show too if you want. We'll be there. We're okay. there. Good. Yeah, everyone will be there. Quick question of the day for today's episode. Uh, look, it's been a long off season. We've been talking about players from the, the the moment after the Super Bowl finished to now. Which players fit into that category of players you are changing your minds about? Uh, I'll hop in here first because we talked about this player yesterday, and it, it's just the the drumbeat and everything that's happened this off season just has continued to be just slammed, which is Darren Waller. Darren Waller is a guy that when I first started my 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 rankings out, he was leading the Giants in targets, but it, it still wasn't – I just didn't believe it was going to be quality targets, a lot of touchdowns, whether or not he still had it. And so he was like my tight end eight, tight end nine, and I just keep moving him up. And then this morning I go and I read – I'm reading – um from 32 Beat Writers on Twitter, great follow. Uh, here's a quote from yesterday's practice. Darren Waller was an absolute monster at practice Monday, caught three of Daniel Jones' first six passes in live drills uh, for touchdowns, it finished with six catches on eight targets that day, also dominated one-on-ones, which of course he's going to dominate one-on-ones. 50, 50% target share, that's what we're talking about. There's huh? a consensus right now that Darren Waller might have had the best camp of any offensive player in the NFL so throughout Ooh. camp and uh, also a note of yesterday's uh, incredible performance which is just a repeat of the days before Daniel Jones I believe completed his first 17 passes in practice well, well, well. and if you throw it to Darren Waller your odds do go up of completing those passes I think we are all it's one of those areas where we have all been um, like targeting Darren Waller excited about the possibility of Darren Waller having success there in New York. And um, yeah, at the beginning of, at the beginning of the off season, I think it was a big question mark. Yeah. I mean, if, if I look at my best ball exposure, I'm very low on Darren Waller. I don't have a ton. I I've been passing him in drafts. It's basically been, you know, Andrews in the third. Maybe, I didn't know you liked Andrews. Maybe uh Pitts if he falls to the seventh and then otherwise I'm going three tight end builds late, but Darren Waller looks like he's going to be a stud this year. Yeah, I, I agree. And by the way, our answers to players we were building are like uh, that had arisen in our rankings because last Thursday we did that question for training camp performances. Those answers, it was DJ Moore, Jason, you said Javante Williams, Mike, it was Zay Flowers. Uh, this is more of a not just moving players up, but actually changing your mind about their outcomes. Where are you at, Mike? Uh, well, the first – just for no reason at all, I'm kind of changing my mind just a, just a little bit on uh, Ramondre Stevenson. Really? Yeah, I just had a, a disturbance in the force. Just a huh. feeling. Just, yeah, just a real gut. Yeah, we haven't talked news, real so gut this must feeling. just be... 
Yeah. I, well, I don't know. I don't know what news you're talking about. Uh, but the player really I want to talk about is like I just iced out this player. I was. Yeah, he re- he took it personally. I we <laughs> like you're welcome, everyone. I motivated Alvin Kamara. He cares incredibly about the opinion of the fantasy footballers and me. A list podcaster Mike yeah. Wright. Oh my god! Uh, but Alvin Kamara, it, I, I'm, I was concerned over the past two years of of what Alvin Kamara has done. The the touches have gone up. The the efficiency has absolutely plummeted. But and we we try not to let too much of real positive things affect things one way or the other because coaches generally are going to speak positive about their players. But it has been an overwhelming amount of positivity for Alvin Kamara. Uh, he will have the three game suspension, so that's a that's going to be a drafter's choice. Are you willing to hold on to that? But again, all, everything out of camp is just saying uh, Kamara is explosive. You watch the preseason, Kamara. Look, he, think about what's changed for you to change your mind, though, because we have we have an injured uh, and Ken, Kendra, Kendra, Kendra Miller. Is, Kendra Miller. Kendra Miller is definitely a part of it because part of my fading of Alvin Kamara was. If he's going to miss three games, and Kendra Miller is the player who was drafted in the third round while injured, a running back was drafted while he was hurt. Like that's teams don't like to do that. And a day two pick, if he came in in those first three weeks, and you're like, "Holy crap, Kendra Miller is looking like the real deal." That's a big problem for Alvin Kamara, and yet now he's hurt again. The same knee that was already hurt. They're hopeful that he'll be ready to go week one. But if he's not getting these reps right now in training camp. Week one is yeah. He's not he, coming out and getting twenty carries. Even if he plays week one, it it will he, still he be. He may not even see the field. Right. It'll be Jamal Williams who is the primary uh, backup. So I have I've, I'm opening uh, I'm opening to the idea that Kamara will have an, another ride where he'll be at least worth his ADP. I'm not I'm not putting him back into the top five where he's been, but he might be an okay draft pick. This is not waiting on Hopkins six weeks. You got three weeks. You got to right. wait with Alvin Kamara. Um. And to be clear, like just to just remind folks of where things stood a week ago, a week ago Kendra Miller was healthy, and a week ago Kenyon Drake or not Kenyon Drake, uh, a week ago Kareem Hunt, yes, was visiting was about to be signing yeah a contract on this team that is a different landscape that goes well beyond any puff pieces in camp. Yep, I will whisper thy name. Yeah, whisper uh, it for me. I will whisper, whisper for me, at baby. a volume equivalent to the stature of this gentleman. Oh, you don't gotta you don't gotta do him dirty like that. <laughs> oh, you you've been doing the little guys dirty yeah. all off season. You, yeah, but you don't. That's <laughs> I'm the mean one. Devon H. A. Yeah, baby. And I, I my mind is changing on Devon H. A. simply because the the camp performances have been solid. The draft cost is is nothing. And, and if you want to look at him as a you know, a discounted uh, Jameer Gibbs in drafts, that's a fair situation. Like, Gibbs Gibbs has tremendous upside. I, I put the tweet out there, like, who do you think my my guys are? Because that episode is Friday. The most common answer for people who, assuming my my guys, Jameer Gibbs was on there. And Jameer Gibbs has to compete with David Montgomery for value, high-value touches. Um, and we don't know what that breakdown is going to be like. Devon A. Chain has to compete with, uh, I think, two talented but fragile running backs in Miami, players that this organization was willing to look at Dalvin Cook pretty uh, sincerely because, you know, Mostert has frequently been hurt. Good year last year, good camp, and starts as the starter. But the pathway for Devon A. Chain, you can't make the argument that it's not similar to what Kendra Miller was facing when he was healthy or Jameer Gibbs is facing like this is an NFL full of, of committees. And so if Devon a chain can make his mark. And one of those two players gets banged up, falls out of favor, fumbles the football talent generally wins out in those situations on a good offense. So a chain is just not somebody that is a risk where you're drafting him right now with tremendous positive upside collegiate production you have to these situations are always very difficult when you say you know this percentage of players at this size don't perform because it's a self-fulfilling prophecy to a degree at the nfl level it's always ammo for our arguments against players but it's also like 
indicative of where they're drafted. Like players of that stature also don't get the opportunities to give you a large enough sample size to really lean into those numbers. Yeah, okay, so small guys don't do it very often because they don't get drafted very often. So, right. so it's like how you don't have 100 guys that are top, you know, five round picks that are that stature that have had the chance and then failed. So it, it's always difficult to look at those things. You know, we see Deuce Vaughn having success. We've seen the shrinking wide receiver position. Like, you need to look at it on surface level and say Devon A. Chain has a chance. That's yeah, all I'm saying. Yeah, Devontae Smith, when he was coming out, the I mean, the haters were out in full force. The historical argument against Devontae Smith was amazing because it was like, it was so universally like he can't he can't make it. At his BMI, he's too skinny. He cannot succeed in the NFL. We have so much historical evidence. But the thing that was missing is kind of what you just said, Andy. It was like, well, yeah, but you also don't have a bunch of these guys' BMIs that are being drafted in the first round of the NFL draft because they're great. And Devon A. Chain was a day two pick. The, the NFL said, no, this guy's really good. We're going to spend really important draft capital on him because he is good. And – if you want an example of how Andy has changed, if you want to know what he used to think, on May 15th. Oh, no. At 3.07 p.m. May, June, July, August. Okay. Okay. This is just after the NFL draft when Andy and I placed a $100 <laughs> wager against <laughs> one another. Andy says, A-Chain, do you remember the bet? I do not. I think, <laughs> is it most are related? Nope. It's just A-Chain carry count per game Andy says A-Chain will not average over six carries a game Jason says of course he will I don't know that, that's, Vic, a, that's Vic, 100 carries now on the I'm, gonna, I'm gonna warn you because victory laps made when zero carries have happened <laughs> yeah. are not necessarily I'm victory lapping that that's 100 carries that's why we did it. Yeah. 100 carries uh, I'm, I'm victory lapping that your opinion has changed and I would guess that if I went to see your stats I'm gonna, in the go, look, draft I'm gonna kit, go look right now it has to be more than 100. It's probably more than 100. I'm going to go take a little peek ski. Mine is not. Really? Uh, I was going to no. say that number is still, it's still an interesting number because if those guys stay healthy, I don't think he hits it. That's um, You're lucky that it's carries. 98! Oh, my <laughs> 98 God. 98 <laughs> rushing attempts, everybody. All right. Okay. The bet stands. It's, like you're, it, it's carries. A-Chain yes, will, will need to get targets. Like... I, uh, I'm again. You know, we have to stay water and be willing to s change our opinions on what's going on. I'm still not in on a chain. Listen, Jameer Gibbs was drafted where? What in pick? the first round? No, like twelve pick overall 12, or something. Okay. Pick twelve. If Jameer Gibbs was drafted in the second or third round, you'd be talking about him as a Ronald Jones potential bust. He's five nine, under yes, two hundred pounds. Smaller. Yeah, but because the draft capital is there. I haven't heard a soul give me the historical numbers of why Jameer Gibbs is going to fail. Not a person has told me that since he got drafted at 12. So, um, yes, because we say, oh, well, yeah, but he got drafted at 12. I know, that, but that's what I'm saying. Like, there aren't a lot of guys that size that get drafted that high. So Gibbs is also like, what, 199? He's, he's right on the 200 Changing cost. your mind is not the same question as saying, what's a player you're all in on? That's not what we said. Sure. I still have Mostert ahead of him in, in fantasy points this year, Jason. I have both. Oh, speaking of Mostert, he was just talking up A-Chain yesterday, talking about how uh, how good a day he had. He shows that versatility and burst. <laughs> He's not the biggest, so I was telling him, you've got to use that aggression to promote that speed. Oh, He's wait. It's, wait. It's nice. Team, teammate talks up teammate? Yeah. Incredible. In Miami? Yeah. Oh. It's nice when the starter you've, puts in a good word for you've the backup. You've done it. You, I'm, I'm changing my rings. <laughs> Jason somehow made Get me... Get out of here with that crap. Jason made me want to talk... <laughs> bad about the guy just talk good about it. yeah you just made that in me i make people feel things <laughs> back in a minute with some news you guys don't know about <sighs> okay we are back let's jump into some uh some news that i mean i've heard about it but i'm gonna break it to these guys get their reaction News and notes from around the league. Presented by USAA Insurance. I did hear J.K. Dobbins is back. He he is back. Yeah, I saw him on the field. Yeah. Both legs. Very excited. 
Uh, Dalvin Cook. What, what what happened with Dalvin? Signed a one-year deal with the New York Football Jets worth up to $8.6 no. million. No, I, li- I lied. This one I this one I heard about. And, oh. And this one. $7 million in base salary. This one brought me tremendous joy. <laughs> oh, did it? Oh, oh did it? Oh, tell me. Tell uh, me more. Because... I, I look. I'm a selfish man. I run a lot of things through my own personal filter. And uh, Jason has Brees Hall as his dude in the dynasty league. Yeah. And now, not only does he have to deal with returning from an ACL, he has to deal with Dalvin Cook getting seven million dollars. Eat it, Zeke. I mean, <laughs> Zeke got like up to six million. I think only three million guaranteed. And then you come in here with Dalvin. I don't know what news you're talking about. We haven't yeah. bro- we haven't yeah, broke right, that right, news no, yet. Don't jump off of your news. My news is <laughs> ain't no distraction. <laughs> look, here's the real news. <laughs> Brees Hall activated from the pup, baby. Okay. He's okay. back. He's like, oh, Dalvin's here. I gotta give. I gotta get on that field. That um, is it, no, 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 no. Mike. It is funny timing. Let, yeah, it's like okay, we'll we'll pull you off of that. Yeah, like, I'm not feeling so good, coach. Okay, great. We're we're gonna bring in some reinforcements. We got Dalvin Cook coming. Ooh, I'm healed. <laughs> so see let, you soon. Let's talk the fantasy implications yeah. here of the arrival of Dalvin. This Cook. morning, uh, the UDK always updated with all this news that you guys hadn't heard about. You guys still updated your rankings despite not hearing about it. Right. Um, I asked Jason this morning after I did my numbers. Where he had Brees Hall ranked. And I told him. And we have him ranked the same exact spot. Ooh. Yeah, and, and obviously we did it independently, and I have a different process. I kind of break the uh, the Jets season specific to Brees Hall coming back into three chunks, like the first four weeks. I think they're going to ease Brees in very slowly. I think you'll have kind of a 10-week chunk where um, it's split rather evenly between these guys. And by the end of the season, Brees will absolutely win out. He's the best player uh, in that backfield. He's too explosive. And by the time he's fully healthy at the end of the season, he will be carrying the workload. Uh, that's that's how I'm projecting this. So I, I broke into three chunks for both players, statted them out on, on three-chunk basis. Andy comes in, totally different process, totally different issue, and then we end up at the same exact spot, which is – we have Brees Hall at running back 21. Mm, I have him at 18. I like it. I like to hear it. I still don't – like, I know I, I have – The difference is, is we both have Dalvin Cook at a different spot. I think I'm 21 and 24. Brees Hall and Dalvin Cook, 21, 24. You have Dalvin Tw- Cook lower. Yeah, I'm 21 and 31 for, uh, for Brees and Dalvin. I don't personally see a situation where this isn't a pure split committee for the duration of the year – like I don't, I don't see any world where Brees Hall is getting more reps than Dalvin Cook in any game this year. The Dalvin Cook is healthy. I believe they brought him in there. I believe he still has juice. I went back and watched every every rep he had over the last handful of games of the season. Um, I think both players are going to make huge contributions to this roster, and I, I don't think that this coaching staff is going to look at it as um, better. This is better than that. I think it's going to be a rotation. This is my personal take, so I look at it more. Even over the year, Jason's uh, commentary on Brees Hall says, yes, he may finish at 21, but his value to your team might be 10, 12, uh, 8 at the end of the year because you believe he's going to take over. It's just the difference in our uh, belief about this team and what what they're trying to do. Dalvin Cook is invaluable not just on the football field, but as a as a veteran and as a leader and as a an experienced player heading into the playoffs, which I think the Jets will be competing for. Um, unless Dalvin has a marked on the field decline, that's my take, Mike. Where where do you sit? It's an absolute disaster. I lean more on the side that uh, I'm interested. I'm still interested in Brees Hall. Let's see what happens to the ADP. It'll, I think it'll go down. Um, but not dramatically. And I think that by the end of the year, Brees Hall will still be the the 1A. I mean, you, you don't give Dalvin Cook $7 million guaranteed to, to bring him in to be just a backup. But I think that it will be Brees Hall at the top of the timeshare around the you know, 50-60% mark of the season. What does that do for Dalvin Cook as a draft pick? Because people have still been drafting Dalvin Cook just on the hope that some of those big explosive plays that we've seen last year, let's, does he get onto a good team? 
Where do you guys think that Dalvin Cook should be drafted? Uh, or where you would feel this is this is safe, this is an appropriate. I'm going to get Dalvin Cook, which we just we got some word that that uh, Coach Sala is saying he's very confident Brees will be ready Week One. So that's good news to hear. That doesn't mean that Brees Hall is a workhorse running back Week One. We didn't we haven't expected that. So Dalvin Cook could be. A, more valuable early uh, yeah he could have real value early but how high of a pick are you willing to risk on on that early value knowing that there it, it could fade away like he could lose value over the course of the season yeah I mean depending on how far he goes on on each platform Dalvin Cook could be the better pick as far as draft day value just because he will have better games at the beginning of the season than than Brees like Brees week one to me, I'm going to be trying to bench him. I want to see what – I'm going to you know, wait until um, he gets into the rotation. As far as where I would draft Dalvin Cook, I'm looking Dalvin at Dalvin Cook or, or Javante Williams? Yeah, that's that's really, really I want to interesting. throw some out there. It's always sure. helpful. I, I um, think I would go Javante. I go Javante. Uh, Dalvin Cook or Zach Charbonnet? Dalvin. Ooh. That was – Yeah, I, that, that's a Dalvin for me yeah. for sure. Um, Dalvin Cook or Rashad White, Rashad who is White. healthy? Dalvin. Okay, uh, so we split you there. Damian Pierce or Dalvin Cook? Damian Pierce. Damian Pierce. James Cook, Dalvin Cook. James Cook. James. James yeah. Dalvin Cook. That's his name? That is his name. Please tell me Dalvin's middle name is James. It is. Oh. Dalvin James Cook and James Dalvin Cook. Those oh, are their yeah. real names. Okay. That is that is fact. I don't know if this is a bit. <laughs> <laughs> we it's do. A, it is a bit. But it's a, not a Jason Moore bit. It's a bit by their parents mm -hmm. who named them. David Montgomery. Kyle, look into this. David Montgomery or Dalvin Cook? Oh, I hope Jason was just lying. <laughs> we'll find out. Jason's right. Okay, confirmed. Uh, Dal David Montgomery or Dalvin Cook? I, I'll, I'll, I'll take the passing game potential of Dalvin. I'll go Dalvin as well. I, I think he's going to be really valuable in the first few weeks. Now, he's not going to practice for another week. Which means yes, that technically Brees will be back to practice before Dalvin. He's still recovering from his shoulder injury. And worth it, worth pointing out, Nathaniel Hackett, yeah. offensive coordinator for the Green Bay Packers, that's where he was a couple years ago, and that was Aaron Jones. We had the, the lightning and the thunder. You had Aaron Jones and you had A.J. Dillon. So that's got a big potential for that. It does. If that if like that was his tendency when you had when you have Aaron Jones and like we like Dillon as a player, but it's like it Aaron is, Jones, he's give this guy the ball all the time, and they would still work in other guys. It's very difficult for me because, you know, I think of one of Brees Hall's huge plays last year. It was a little screen pass, um, more like a, a, a running back screen that he housed from 60 out. And I'm like, I watched Dalvin do that a handful of times last year. It's like if they're splitting those opportunities, it says a lot for this year. And it, it's great for the Jets. The Jets. Yeah. Yeah. So I know some people think Dalvin's completely washed, and they're the, they're going to be the people drafting Brees Hall in every fantasy draft. They're going to be the first ones to the table for Brees. And um, Mike, this is the news that you hadn't quite heard about. Um, did you know that the Patriots signed Ezekiel Elliott to a one-year deal worth up to six million dollars? Guys, I've been lying the whole time. <laughs> you have heard about this? I did hear about this. Uh, <laughs> I've known about this news, and it's. Did you get tagged or? A little bit. People are <laughs> checking in. Appreciate everyone out there on X making sure that my mental health is okay. I made it through. Um, it is not as – this news is not as devastating as Dalvin Cook is to Brees Hall and uh, of what that, that could be. But here's where it really stinks for Ramondre Stevenson. Stevenson was not the best at the goal line this past offseason. Uh, in in short area or short yardage situations, that wasn't really his strongest suit. Uh, Fumbled a little bit yeah, at the end you, of the year when do, I needed him to get into the end zone. You do have that, um, but at the time when I was really into drafting Stevenson, no one else was going. No one else on that roster could possibly take that work away from him. They just weren't good enough. And it was well, let's wait. Who's going to actually sign here? And it's Zeke. I I think that Zeke is certainly past his prime, but where he was still successful was short area and at the goal line. Him far more successful than Ramondre Stevenson. And if you have even with Ramondre still getting the pass work, if Zeke comes in and he takes over fifty percent, 
of the goal line carries, which I don't think is an, an outrageous thing to say. It could be even more. If that happens, Stevenson's value takes a pretty major hit. Stevenson is still the running back I want. I don't really want to draft Zeke, but it moves Ramondre. I'm pretty much at ADP market now with Ramondre Stevenson, so it's not we're not getting a, a, a screaming deal in the draft to where I had him ranked. I still want Stevenson on my team, but this is a – it, this certainly caps the ceiling. Yeah, I, I still have Ramondre Stevenson at RB12. I think he's going to be great this season. You you saw this last year, right? With I have Damian, him at 10. He moved to 10. For with, with Damian Harris and Ramondre Stevenson, you already had someone that was taking the you know some of that early down work so that they could focus Ramondre Stevenson and let him really be part of the pass catching game. Um, Zeke is not the, the player that would have come in to hurt him as much, I definitely think Zeke has lost a step. Still, much better than the other backups, Pierre Strong, and 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 what they were dealing with. Um, but he is is the weaker asset in that backfield compared to Ramondre. And um, I'm looking here. It looks like the final two minute drill yesterday finished with Ramondre Stevenson taking a shallow crosser, forty yards to the house. And he's still a good player. He, he, here's uh, a couple things to factor in. One, Zeke Zeke scored twelve times last year. 12 touchdowns. He'd scored 11 of them in nine games. He had a run of nine consecutive games scoring oh, a yeah. touchdown. The, the schedule. He, he knows, the plan. <laughs> he knows how to score. Um, and he had a pretty good fantasy season. And, and I agree with everything you guys are saying, except it's very interesting to look at the box scores last year of Ramondre Stevenson, even when Damian Harris was missing time. He had games where he had 11 carries, 7 carries, 3 carries, 8 carries, 6 carries. I think Zeke could get a lot of the between the tackles, first and second down work. And, he could. And obviously Ramondre was still very valuable, but he you know, he finished at 11 last year, and that was on the back of 69 receptions. Nice. So, um, I mean, you guys laid it out pretty well. I. It's not as good as if he didn't sign, but he's still going to be competing every week, and the only variable that exists that hasn't been discussed is the fact that Bill Belichick and the Patriots are they're wild. Like trust goes a long way. If Ramondre fumbles, there's somebody else there that can get more work. There really wasn't that option for them. No. It was very so you, sorry, it was very apparent if you watched the preseason uh matchup and they were trying to give these backups the <laughs> some carries for the Patriots. I think that was the final straw for Bill Belichick. He went, hmm. Nope, this is not good enough. I got to go get one of these vets. Uh, and I would also imagine now that both Zeke and Dalvin Cook are off the market, that the domino of uh, Cream Hunt will fall soon. And um, where is that going to be? <sighs> Who oh, knows? my name <laughs> is Alexander <laughs> Madison. I'm a little, yeah, I'm wondering. Uh, J.K. Dobbins off the pup, return to practice. Woo! I am very excited for Dobbins. Anthony Richardson is the starter for the Indianapolis Colts. Good for you, Colts. You guys, you guys watched all the reps during the preseason? Yeah, I did. I saw some bad stuff, and I saw some great just stuff too. incredibly great stuff. What he can do when when it's good is so good. And did you hear his response? He was shocked. Yeah, he was shocked that he was named the week one starter. Hey, look, if I'm competing against Gardner Minshew, I'd be shocked if I beat him out too. He's just too cool. <laughs> Uh, Brock Purdy will no longer require any off days now in practice, gearing up for the regular season, ready to rumble. Mike Gesicki, dislocated shoulder, minor disco, yeah, yeah. <laughs> mild dislocated <laughs> shoulder. Uh, he has been having a pretty good camp. T.J. Hawkinson. <laughs> I, I, mean, I don't know he, why you guys are laughing. I'm this. laughing because I've never seen it. I've never seen. He's dealing with an ear. Uh, that's he's an dealing inner. with an ear infection. Too much time in the tub. It was uh, it, it was throwing off his equilibrium. But I've just never seen a practice report that's like – because we've wondered the whole time, is this money? Right. Is this finances? <clears throat> Why has he been off the field? It was an ear infection. And then it, it finally got revealed it was an ear infection. It was like, well, that's a new one. I guess I the equilibrium makes perfect well, sense. I say, yeah. it, it's new for us for football, but if you've ever had a bad ear infection, goodness gracious. Yeah. Imagine, imagine getting hit in the head while you have an When's ear infection. When's the last time you had an ear infection? Uh, it's been a long time. Been a long time. It's okay, Mike. He's a tight end, so he's wearing the big pillow helmets right now. <laughs> uh, and then uh, Cowboys, they have their guard back. Zach Martin. Yeah. Zach Martin wins. <laughs> those those pillow helmets, which are so funny looking, when it's on a small player, like yeah. like J.K. Dobbins yesterday watching him, 
it just looks like how can you how can you hold your head up? I'm sure they're very light, but it looks like it would you be You look like the 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 great gazoo from yeah, the Flintstones. Like you put in the code on NBA Jam for a bobblehead. Yeah. <laughs> You're just full it, it, the proportions just don't look right. I I already told Jason this. Like I don't like they, they they're clearly better for the players, so why don't they just like play all the games with those? Because the players still want to look cool. Yeah, I, just, <laughs> I mean, it they really look, is. Because they look ridiculous. Oh. All right, uh, that was today's news and notes presented by USAA Insurance. Learn more at usaa.com slash insurance. Let's hop into the mailbag. 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 All right, if you have a question for the show, you can go to the website, thefantasyfootballers.com. Click that submit a question button, or you can dial our voicemail hotline, 302 302- Four six four, T F F B. We'll go ahead and um, we'll kick this off with a voicemail question. Actually, no. Let me let me answer this one first because we haven't whispered about it yet. But one common question that came through on socials was: Is the Megala Bowl happening again this year? <laughs> yep. Does, does a bear crap in the woods? <laughs> yep. Of course, it's happening. <laughs> it's the biggest, best tournament of the year it the winner will play in our next year's listener league and we will be announcing how to join yeah yeah uh, oh also i mean like right now because if you if you support us at jointhefoot.com you're going to have a free entry into the megalobal yeah it's just the 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 link will not be up correct until next week but you could prep up yeah you can you know you can go pledge over there and then you're ready to rumble when i when i announce there you go here's a voicemail Hey, footballers, they call me Big Chungus, and I live in Texarkana. Bonjour. I have a question. If you could pick your draft slot, which one would you take? Rank them from favorite to least favorite. Thanks. Hashtag dinner butter. <laughs> okay, first of all, That's not how first of all work. I'm not ranking 12 spots in order, Chungus. Favorite spot, least favorite spot. Seriously, that was a Big Chungus reference? I think it was Big Chungus. My favorite spot is number three. Actually, no, I'm changing that. It was four, then it was three. My favorite spot is now number two. Because I would want... like, I would like the CMC Jefferson decision made for me. Chase with the calf of Burrow re-injury risk, cup hamstring. I'm I'm going to remove those from locks. I guess I could say three and put Tyreek in there, but no, I'm going to go number two. Uh, you said exactly my opinions right now, hundred <clears throat> percent identical. I said my opinions, but uh, yeah. I mean, um, I'm good with. I share. You're, them. you're with them. So number everything two? you said, I was four. Yeah. Then with those other two issues, I'm okay. Two. I'm still sitting at four. Uh, you're I'm, comfortable with cut? I'm yes. Uh, I'm comfortable with the three wide receivers, Christian McCaffrey, and then I get, you know, just a slightly earlier choice for my second pick. All right. Thank you for the the question. Big chungus. <laughs> All right, uh, Twitter question from the sports fan says, can you explain on the position premium in smaller leagues like a 10-team and 8-team league? Andy briefly mentioned it on the Saturday mock draft show. Sure. I mean, uh, we were discussing it related to the tight end position. Um, When you're in a 12, 14, 16-team league, if you don't end up with Travis Kelsey and Mark Andrews, you still play the rest of your games, other than those two teams that have those two players against people with a very similar tight end situation to you. So it's not a positional advantage to the degree that it is in an eight team league where you're probably facing Kelsey and Andrews and Waller two times in a league like that, um, where you're going to be outmanned at the position. So that's, that's my philosophy of it. Yeah. That that's one way to look at it. The, uh, another way to describe the same thing is to just say everybody's team in a 10 team or an eight team league is really good like your your third flex is going to be a a nice player and so is your opponents and so there are only a few players in all of fantasy football that are outliers there's only one of you you know the your Christian McCaffrey your big three at quarterback uh Mark Andrews Travis Kelsey at tight end like you have to the usually when you look at who wins in a smaller league they've got They've got one or two of those type of players that set them apart because everyone's roster is great. And it's you. it goes the other way, too, of just looking at how many players are being drafted. Like, everyone 
in a normal league, everyone is starting at least two running backs, at least two wide receivers. So if you're now at four, if you go from a 12 to a 14 teamer, how many running backs on average are those teams drafting? Four, five, right? Okay, now the player pool. Now you have 10 running backs that are removed from the player pool going from a 12 to a 14. Uh, and Jason's right of you need to have the guys that can separate. You can absorb the uh, the draft cost of taking uh, the high-end quarterback or the, 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 the tight end because there's fewer running backs being drafted, and so your player better, pool better is better. Better ones are going to come back to yes. you. Yes. Yeah. Back into a voicemail question. Hi, this is Dave from Indiana. I'm in a league where it's a super flex league, but quarterback is, is somewhat undervalued and not drafted as quickly as it should be. What's my best strategy to take advantage of that and draft quarterback tie to get a positional advantage or kind of stick with a herd so I don't miss out on some value picks later on? Thanks, guys. So this is a super flex question, uh, but they're saying that surprisingly it's not just a huge quarterback run uh, at the top of the draft. So how would you handle that draft? To me, this is great news. Um, this is – I'm going to get two awesome quarterbacks. You're going to spend your your – Try your heavy capital picks on that one, and but then the the wide receiver and running back pool is going to be much so in much a super lower. in a super flex where obviously you're you're starting twenty four wide receivers every single or twenty four quarterbacks every single week every single quarterback will be drafted there isn't just a waiver wire where you can go and uh, make changes you can't stream the position and they 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 do score the most obviously that's why we go from late round quarterback strategy to usually like the first six or seven picks in a super flex are the quarterback position if you know you in the second round in a normal super flex where the first round is all these you know great quarterbacks I'm almost never taking a quarterback in that second round because they're just they're a tier or two too low compared to the running backs and wide receivers that are there I'm not going to do that but if this is a league where all of a sudden a really good quarterback is falling into the middle of the second round, someone that is in that, you know, if if a Herbert or a Fields or a, a you know, even like a Lawrence is is falling deep into the second round, that's where it's like that's worth it to me because if you could start your draft with a Josh Allen and, a, a, you know, another one of those guys, the top seven guys, if you could start, I mean, you're going to be at such an advantage – um, that's the way I I would personally play it. I would be really willing to take the one uh, if you can get the true top tier quarterback, and then it's just paying attention to the tiers. I mean, it, we're really saying the same thing. I'm just I would anticipate that my second pick would would likely be a wide receiver or a running back. But I think Jason's right. If if you're looking at tier whatever four tier three tier four running backs, and there's still a somehow a tier one running back or quarterback because your league. Just undervalues them, then uh, then just load up and kill people that way. Kill people, yeah, with points. Okay, that just sounded really extreme. Uh, I take it very seriously. <laughs> Twitter uh, question from Maury says, "Where do you find the ADP comparison tool uh, that shows you ADP between different platforms?" I checked the app and the website. I couldn't find it. We just announced this. Uh, worth stating it again. We added a new research tool to the Ultimate Draft Kit. That allows you to we have we've always had an ADP page in there that shows the sleeper ADP by scoring system. Um, and that updates every day. We have now added an ADP comparison tool, which shows you the differentiation between ESPN, Yahoo, Sleeper, Underdog, and that is found under the research ADP platform comparison tab in the UDK. It is not on the app yet. Not right? yet. Uh, so it is only on the web version. It will be added to the app at some point. Um, but if you looked on the app and you didn't find it, that's why I should have specified, just go to, uh, here's a little shortcut. If you have the UDK, you can go to myudk.com. Mm, that's how I get there. And it takes you right into the dashboard and you can click on the research tab and find it there. We, we will be talking about certain platforms where players can be, uh, dare I say stolen. Yeah. I mean, Dalvin cook is a perfect example. Because there are certain platforms that are far more active in the offseason. Like Sleeper is usually much more active. Um, so he's in the sixth round right now. He's the sixth pick in the sixth round. But if you look at um, some other platforms, like he's not even registering right now on ESPN and Yahoo. He's going undrafted in a lot of those leagues. And so when he starts getting drafted, it will be very, very late. Their ADP will be lagging and they will be lower. So Dalvin Cook could very easily, if you're playing in an ESPN or a Yahoo league, 
th- those are the type of players where they probably won't adjust in ADP quick enough where if you're drafting any time in the next couple weeks, it's probably going to be a value. All right, let's jump into another voicemail question. Andy, Mike, and Jason, love you guys' podcast, man. You guys are great. Um, just had a question regarding Derrick Henry. He hasn't really been talked about this offseason a whole lot. What do you guys think his um, potential ceiling is, and also where do you think worst-case scenario he could end up? Thanks, guys. All right, so the question is whether where do we see Derrick Henry's outlook and, and potential for this season? Where is he going to end up? I know everybody's been waiting for the shoe to drop on Derrick Henry, which – you know, he got hurt a couple of years ago and then came back last year and stayed mostly healthy. So, you know, what are the range of outcomes for Derrick Henry? Yeah, he, he stayed super healthy. He would have played all 17 games last year. They rested him in week 17 because they had that weird situation where it didn't matter. It didn't matter. Yeah. So they just, you know, for the playoffs, um, he was the running back four last year. He had 1,538 rushing yards and almost 400 receiving yards, a little bit more involved in the receiving game. The the truth for Derrick Henry is when he loses it, it's gone. It, that, this type of player, uh, we've seen it just time after time after time after time. We have not yet seen that he's lost anything. I do not believe he's lost anything. Um, he is the center of this offense. Every you know, when when they talk about this team this off season. They still acknowledge, like after the Hopkins signing, this is Derrick Henry's team. He's going to get the ball a ton, and I think he's a screaming value right now for how he has fallen due to the fears of age and due to the fears of the team. Like the Titans have been a team that early this offseason seem like they are ready to collapse and fall apart. This division is the Jaguars to you know now, and and they need to move on. They drafted a Banana Rama at quarterback, <laughs> Will Levis. Will Levis, and so you know they're, third stringer. They're they're ready to they're ready to move on and rebuild and all that. But truly, to me, the Hopkins signing was monumental. It changed what I believe this offense can be. It took Traylon Burks from a hopeful upside. I mean, it hurt him for fantasy, but it put him into a great position to succeed in the NFL. Now with Traylon Burks as a wide receiver too, DeAndre Hopkins on the outside, Derrick Henry in the backfield, Ryan Tannehill should be fine. They're well coached. And for Derrick Henry to succeed, you want them to win games. He is the closer. He is the four minute running back. He is the guy that like, yeah. how many W's do the Titans have? And it looked early this offseason like they were going to be a, you know, competing for a high draft pick. Now I'm like, I think they're going to be winning games. If they're winning games, Derrick Henry is awesome. Let, let me make the bear case for the season. And, and if you agree, Mike, or I don't know which side you stand. The weapons that you brought up, they didn't they didn't have any last year. So DeAndre Hopkins, healthy Traylon Burks, Chiga Conquo broke out over the back half of the year. Those are three viable weapons in the offense. This team... um also drafted a player that we haven't talked about, but in preseason, very impressive. Heck of a Derrick Henry impression on a stiff arm. Tajay Spears. Tajay Spears running back. Um, they haven't had any viable backup running backs on this roster. Uh, last year, when he didn't score a touchdown, he was at 9.6 fantasy points per game. So he should score a lot of touchdowns. There, There's not like – the bear case is not Derrick Henry's useless. It's just that maybe – Derrick Henry has a 1,300-yard rushing season, and he doesn't score 20 times, and maybe you're disappointed, even though it's better than most running backs end up? It Yeah, it's certainly possible the offensive line for the Titans is not uh, projecting very well if you're into PFF's grading system at all. The Titans currently dead last. They are 32nd best, uh, according to Pro Football Focus. I am more on the side of double digit touchdowns in five straight years yeah, for him. I, I am him more on the side of he is the Yeti. He is a uh, mythical creature. And at this point, he's still going to be dominating on a on a football field. He is he's he is a complete outlier because it's if, also discounted if he were to yes, repeat it. Oh it, yeah. Yeah, his his ADP is a little deflated, but it's like Derrick Henry is everything about the profile of Derrick Henry says this is a running back that I would fade nine out of ten times. He's going to be turning 30. He's Wow, yes, he, he caught some more passes this past week. He's close to a zero in the passing game. But he's this is a different player, and he has different rules, and he doesn't care 
about what 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 other people say about those things, and I think that the, he will continue to see, you know, what so much cr- work through over three hundred yeah. attempts on the ground. I think that the yards and the touchdowns will be there. Derrick Henry was the fourth running back drafted last year. People were calling for the bust. Instead, he finished as the running back four, and now you can get him in the second round. It does it. It, it feels a little bit like what happened to Nick Chubb last year, where Nick Chubb was. He was like a the same spot in the draft, and then he was the best running back for the first like ten weeks, and we're all like, "Oh, probably should have seen that as a possibility." Like Derrick Henry could a hundred percent be the best pick in the draft. Derrick Henry is in the second round because of cowards, <laughs> because of <laughs> fear, fear based drafting, fear based drafting. Yeah. yeah, that's a new strategy that I don't recommend. I don't either. Where he's going. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> He might be bad. He's Superman. Can you just just draft. Him. You can only draft with no more than three seconds on the clock. Oh yeah, yeah. No cheat sheet either. Yeah. You just have to no. scream a name. <laughs> scream a name outside. Nelson Aguilar. <laughs> um, all right, that is going to do it for today's episode of the show. We'll be back tomorrow, Brooks. What are we doing tomorrow? <laughs> oh, Brooks. Uh oh. Uh oh. Couldn't find the button. We are top ten tips and tricks. Okay. Oh. And then the next day after that, mock draft mayhem. And the day after that. My guys. Yeah, we got big shows coming up. TheFantasyFootballers.com if you want access to all of our content. An amazing writing staff over there pumping out incredible articles. Check that out. Back with you tomorrow. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.